Hey everybody, this is my 10 gallon office tank and I just fed the tank for the evening. I thought I'd grab my camera since I had it right here ready to hand and I'd just shoot a little bit of video. This is the angelfish that I had down in quarantine in the basement for several weeks. I brought it home from the big chain pet store and it looked really terrible when I brought it home. It was sick, its scales were all sort of grayed out. It had some white fuzz on its lips, and within a day or so of getting it home, I found fin rot developing on its tail, or not its tail fin, its uh, anal fin. And so I treated it, I treated it both with a little bit of aquarium salt, and I actually used Pimafix, apparently successfully, for the first time. Uh, every time I've ever used Pimafix to treat any kind of condition at all for a fish. The fish I've been treating or other fish in the tank have died. And so this time when I treated it, I treated it with a half dose of what it called for with the Pima fix. And within a few days, the um, anal fin started looking better. And I hope I caught it while the tail, I mean, while the fin was still long enough that it didn't, you know, damage down into uh, again, I don't know what it's called. I've likened it uh, to the equivalent in humans of our nail beds. You know, if you damage the nail bed, your fingernail won't grow anymore. And the same thing happens with the fins on the fish. If the fins get damaged too deeply, too close to the fish's body, uh, it damages the area where the fins, you know, get made, basically. And you don't get any more fin growth. You don't get any regeneration. You'll just have a sort of stubby little tail or whatever. In this case, I think I did it in time, and he's just not going to turn sideways for us there. There we go, a little bit of look at his tail. Um, I don't know why I keep calling it his tail fin. It's his anal fin, not his caudal fin. But if you look at it, you can see where it's actually starting to grow back out. I know it sort of looks blunt and stunted, but that is actually in the process of growing back out. It was considerably shorter than that. His colors come back fantastic. And even the um, dorsal fin that was sort of blunted over and damaged, I don't know if it had been nipped on and chewed on by other fish when it was in the uh, big chain pet store's tank or what, but this fish looked pretty rough, so I'm very happy with it. This is definitely going to be a success for story for me so far, and I've had it for about a month now, or thereabouts. I have a tough time keeping track of time. But I've had it for a little while now, and it's just continuing to improve, and it's looking better and better every day. That fin's growing back. It's eating normally. When I first put it in this tank, I'll grant you there was a lot of really, really small guppies, like little tiny fry and, and you know, real young ones. So the angelfish went nuts on a feeding frenzy and was just chasing them everywhere. But once it had finished gobbling up all the little tiny fish... It still spent almost all of its time just frantically chasing the endlers and even the guppies, you know, the larger ones, just chasing them around the tank everywhere all day. And so what I started doing was I started feeding the tank several times a day, but only very small amounts. And the idea was to two things. One was to put some weight on the angelfish and get it healthy again so that it wasn't, you know, so aggressively trying to eat all the time. It was really thin and I'm sure it just needed food badly. And I also wanted to get it used to the food source being me, not the fish in the tank. And I wanted to more or less get it trained to expect to get food from me rather than you know, just fending for itself. And it's gotten a lot better. It doesn't really chase the other fish around the tank anymore. You can see it's just kind of behaving the way angelfish typically behave, where it just sort of hangs in the water column, looking majestic and beautiful. It's one of the things I like about angelfish. They're not overly active fish. They don't swim around constantly like they're in a panic or a frenzy. They just sort of drift around looking majestically, although this one is just going to stay turned away from us no matter... Uh, what direction we try to look at him from. So anyway, he's looking really good. The The behavior has changed, and again, he's not really chasing all the other fish around. He's putting weight on, and I'm saying he arbitrarily. I have no idea whether it's male or female. 
and just all in all I'm really happy with it and I'm happy with the way it looks here in the tank I also recently got in here and thinned the plants way out I had a ton of that um, Windelov in there that that Java fern Windelov in there and I think I still have some left I'll put my Gmail down below as always if you're interested in tropical um, or aquatic plants rather then I've usually got some for sale. I usually have water sprite and I usually have java fern and as I said I believe at the moment I have some of this Windelov java fern. It's got those uh, sort of lacy tips on it. It's a really interesting looking java fern. I didn't like it at first but it's really grown on me and again I really really reduced a lot of it out of this tank so I do have some of that available. I've also got my little chocolate oh, I'm sorry not my chocolate zebra pleco. I don't know why I'm saying that. My Oh, I can't think of what it's called now. Clown Pleco. There we go. I knew I'd get to it eventually. Uh, I got my little Clown Pleco living in here. He kind of stays in that cave most of the time, but it does come out and chew on this woodwork, and I do put algae wafers in it, uh, in the tank for it. I was kind of hoping we'd get a little glimpse of it tonight. It usually comes out when the algae wafers goes in. It's not particularly shy, but it's not really outgoing either. I don't really see it just hanging out in the open, but it comes out to feed when food goes in the tank. It's kind of unusual that I'm not seeing it now. And on a final note, I'll say that this tank has also become one that I use to collect snails. You can see them crawling all over that wood. When I come in and turn the lights on in the morning, this piece of wood usually has several snails all over it. And then I can pick them off of the glass. And this is where Butterbean gets a lot of his snails for his dinner. I have the snail tank down in the basement. But I've also got this tank and then my wife's tank, um, the tank I've got set up for my wife in her room, that's got snails in it too so I can go in there from time to time with my forceps and just snatch a bunch of snails out of that tank and go down and feed butter bean as well and I almost forgot I always kind of forget I've got a peppered quarry in this tank maybe I'll get him some company one day because it's in there by itself but it also has that clown pleco on the bottom and I don't want to put too many bottom dwelling fish on there the plecos can be territorial and they can get unpleasant if there's other fish on the bottom of a tank uh, that they don't want being around them or anything. So there you go. There's a little look at my office tank. Otherwise, not a lot going on today. But if you're subscribed, you won't miss anything else I've got coming up on any of my other tanks down in my fish room. So don't forget this one here is my office tank. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this one. And I look forward to seeing you real soon on the next one.